Up next, Doug Zipes is joined by Dr. Eric Van Bell, Chief of the Cardiac Catheterization Laboratory at the Hospital Cardiologique in Lille, France. They discuss outcome impact of coronary revascularization strategy, reclassification with fractional flow reserve at the time of diagnostic angiography, the FFR registry. Welcome. It's a pleasure to talk with you today. Thank you very much. Cardiologists often face the difficult decision as to how to treat a patient with coronary disease, whether medical management, PCI, or surgery is the preferred technique. And there's often a quandary, you do a cast, you look at the pictures, and you say, well, maybe it's an 80% obstruction, let's do this, or let's do that. And certainly, Fractional Flow Reserve, FFR, has been a relatively recent but very important and useful modality. Tell us a little bit about the trial that you set up to use this parameter to help make decisions. So what we know now so far regarding the use of FFR was based mainly on the DEFER and FEM program. And in this program, almost exclusively the patient included were patients already pre-selected for PCI, which is a little bit different from the situation that the physician has to face every day where faced with an angiography, he has to make a decision. And in this situation also, FFR could be a very important adjunct. This study, what we did, we selected 20 centers in France and the purpose was to include more than 1,000 patients. And the idea was to record the medical decision based on the angiography only for every single patient, then to do the FFR measurement and to record again the medical decision. So this decision could be medical treatment, PCI or a bypass surgery. And that was based on the initial angiographic appearance? Yes. The first decision was based on the angiographic appearance. Then a second decision was recorded again once the FFR was performed. Excellent. And just for our listeners, the FFR or fractional flow reserve is obtained by a pressure-sensitive wire and you obtain pressures proximal, essentially the aortic pressure, and distal to the obstruction with a hyperemic or vasodilation response. That's correct. Indeed, it adds a little bit of time to the simple angiography because you have to push your wire distal to the vessel you want to investigate and to perform the injection of adenosine most of the time to create the hyperemia. So indeed, it increases the length of the angiography. So you have to keep that in mind. Excellent. All right. So you then performed FFR measurement. And what did you do then? Usually, based on the results, when the FFR is above 8.8, you consider that there is no ischemia in the territory, while once the FFR is below 0.8, then you consider that there is ischemia in this territory. And what we did in this study was, first analysis we did was to compare the proportion of patients referred to medical treatment PCI or bypass surgery based on angiography versus the same proportion of once the FFR was performed. And the first message that we had is that basically the proportions were very little modified by the use of FFR. The proportion of patients referred to medical treatment increased a little bit. The proportion of patients referred to PCI decreased a little bit. And the proportion of patients referred to surgery increased a little bit, but in a very small proportion. Okay, so the FFR measurement did not change very drastically the proportion of patients to these three arms of therapy. That's correct. And then... So that's the first message. I think it's a very important message because if we keep in mind the result of the DEFER study where patients were only included based on PCI, there was a misconception that if you do an FFR in a patient, you will decrease the number of patients treated by PCI which was not really the case in this study. 
But then if we look at every single patient, we see that almost 50% of the case, 43% of the case actually, the patient change group. So it could change from medical treatment to PCI or medical treatment to surgery or from surgery to medical treatment. And indeed, in almost one out of two patients, the patient change group between the decision based on angiography versus the decision based on FFR. So that's interesting. The proportions stay the same, but the patients actually switch boxes, if you will. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. The end, so basically we have two groups of patients, the group that changed based on the FFR and the other group that didn't change. And if we follow the, these two populations, we see that basically the number of events is the same. So meaning that if you take a decision based on FFR and in disagreement with the angiography, which was the case in almost 50% of the population, then you remain safe for your patient and suggesting that indeed this patient would have been treated inappropriately if the FFR was not being used. Okay, it's safe to take your decision based on FFR and in disagreement with angiography. So did the FFR then help you make the right decision for these patients, or did the decision not matter whichever way they went? Very good question. Indeed, we believe that it's helped to make the proper decision. But if we really want to answer this question, we have to basically randomize that use. And it's basically what we try to start in France now also. It's a study focusing on a patient with angiographic three vessel disease and to randomize versus I take the decision based on the information that I have versus I use the FFR to help for my decision and we will follow the patient and see. That's the next study. That's the next step. Excellent. Well, this has really been very enlightening. In the closing minute or two, what is the take-home message? What do you want the clinician to think about or do differently based on the outcomes of this trial? First thing is, if we keep the information of the data from the FAME study, then the FFR should be used only as an adjunct to PCI. What we believe that indeed FFR should be used earlier, that means at the diagnostic phase, in addition to a coronary angio, to help for the medical decision. It's the first message. Second message is, if you have a broad use of FFR, you should not be afraid to decrease so much the number of PCI in your center. And if you have this uh, relatively broad use of FFR, then we believe that you will be able to deliver the proper treatment to the proper patient. Well, excellent. It's been very educational talking with you, and I appreciate you spending time with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.